Are you ready? The first key or the first um, mystery that is given to us from scripture as far as opening closed doors is concerned is the use of the right keys. The first way we open closed doors is by using the right key or the right keys. Closed doors are opened by using the right keys. Please underline right keys. A wrong key does not open a closed door, even though it is a key. Hallelujah. There are many of us who every house, I presume, has multiple doors. And sometimes every one of those doors would have a unique key. Is that true? The key that may open the main door may not open the kitchen door. So you can have a key, a correct key, meant for another door. If it is the kitchen that you want to open, you must use the key that is meant for the kitchen. I think there has been a mix-up of this, especially in the body of Christ. And you've heard me say it again and again. There is a mix of different keys, believing that because they are divine keys, they will open every door. An example, using prayer and fasting alone as the ultimate key to prosperity and the manifestation of prosperity. It doesn't work that way. No. Prayer and fasting in addition to other things is what will guarantee the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord upon an individual. Prayer and fasting on its own does not take ignorance. Or an example is Bible study without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It will only end you to become a religious person with nothing potent to produce result. Or submitting to the ministry of the word and ignoring the ministry of prayer and fasting. No. Jesus himself, I've clarified this many times in this house. He calls himself the word and yet his life was invested in prayer. Even as he's seated at the throne of heaven now, he's not quoting scriptures, he's making intercession. That is the value he has for prayer, even though being the word. Are we together? So the first way we open closed doors in this kingdom is the use of the right keys. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7, please. Revelation 3, 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, we read that earlier, but let's just read again for emphasis. This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. There's a separate teaching coming on that, so I'm not going to talk so much about that. The Bible says by that key he can open and no man can shut, and he can shut and no man can open. It takes more than desire for doors to be open. It takes the right key. Someone say the right key. Amen. Luke eleven fifty two. Luke chapter 11, please, and verse 52. Woe unto you lawyers, Jesus is speaking, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. So keys there refer to a body of truth, a body of knowledge. It says, ye entered not in yourself through that knowledge, and them that were entering you have hindered. So he was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees the doctors of the law at that time, and he was telling them, listen, you have, you have taken away the key of knowledge, access to knowledge. That means that knowledge is supposed to usher you into realms to open doors for you. You didn't enter yourself, and you have restricted those who desire to enter. The right key. In the name of Jesus, my prayer for someone this year is that God will grant you grace to find the right key. Amen. Please shout a believing amen. amen. That God will grant you grace to find the right key. Amen. Many of you have been holding keys, but could it be that the key you have been holding is not for the door you are looking for? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. 
in most large houses, they put all their keys together or at least maybe one one each of the keys and they put it together in a bunch and keep it somewhere safe. Is that true? Yes. So that you can have it within your reach. If it's the main door you are opening, you have it there. If it's the kitchen door, the bathroom door, you have it there. For most of us, you have been given these keys, but because of carelessness, you scattered your keys like the bones in Ezekiel's valley, and you cannot construct it together to become something exceedingly great. This is the year God is granting you grace to gather them together. Amen. Hallelujah. The first way we open closed doors is through the use of the right keys. This talks of knowledge, this talks of understanding, this talks of faith. You need knowledge and you need understanding. It is my prayer and my determination this year to bring light like never before, truth upon truth, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, to the end that God will grant us grace that with light we will be able to rise. The Bible says that we are able to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his light. Hallelujah. Number two, how do we open closed doors? Are you ready? The second way according to scripture that closed doors are opened is by knocking. By knocking. Knocking here means obtaining help from men through mercy and favor. Don't forget this. The second way that closed doors are open is by knocking. Every time you knock a door, it is because you do not have the power to open it yourself. If you have a key, you do not need anybody helping you. Are we together now? Once you have a key, you do not need anybody helping you. The key itself will open. In fact, sometimes you don't even need to speak. The moment there is a key, the door opens. But the moment you do not have a key and you need that door open, another system that God put is to knock. Because the one who opens has access to the door. But now you need entrance, but you do not have the key. Is someone learning now? Knocking. Knocking talks about obtaining help from men through the ministry of mercy and favor. We already looked at Matthew 7 from verse 7 to 8. The Bible says, knock and it shall be open to you. You are not the one who will open it. It shall be open to you. There are doors that need to be opened but not by you directly. They must be open for you. The most important thing is that they are open so that you will enter. At such points, playing around with a key, around a door that you don't have authority over will only waste your time. What you need to do is to knock. The Bible says in verse 8, for everyone that knocketh, it shall be opened. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is where the ministry of mercy and favor comes. There are doors you need opened by all means, but you may not have the spiritual capacity. You don't have the key, but there are people that have the key. What you need to do is to master the art of knocking. Those who can knock will have many doors open that is not credited to their personal efforts. There are people behind at the other side of that door. They have access to it. All you need to do is to learn how to knock. Is someone learning? 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Furthermore, he said, Paul was speaking now, giving them a story. I just picked a verse that I found interesting there. It says, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, it says, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Who opened the door for him? The Lord. The door was open, but he never mentions using a key to open that door. He says, it was open unto me. In fact, one last scripture, Revelation 3 and verse 20. Very popular scripture, Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand. Who is speaking here? Jesus, standing at the door of your heart and knock. 
because even though he is the creator of the ends of the earth, when he created man, he made you a free moral agent that even though he is God, it becomes scripturally incorrect for him to budge into your life. And he's patient enough. If God knocks, you must learn how to knock. There are certain doors that you will need to hide your pride and knock this year. There are doors of grace, doors of power, because it is only those who knock that will have that door open. Is someone learning? Not every door. Every door may respond to keys, but you may not have the privilege of access to every key. Yet you need every door that should be open, open. So you must know how to knock. To knock requires patience. To knock requires persistence. Is someone learning now? Let's go to Luke 11 and finish up the scripture that we started now. God is giving someone wisdom already. Matthew chapter, I mean Luke chapter 11 from verse 7. Now, remember our story? Where the guy began to knock and say, please help me with three loaf of bread. I want to give my friend. And the man said, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. Are you seeing that that door was positively closed for the man and his children? But with respect to the one who needs help, that door needs to be opened. He said, I cannot rise and give thee. What did the man do? I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, the word importunity is the word persistence, he said he will rise and give him as many. He asked for three, but he said you can even get more by knocking. Your intention was to get three loaf, but knocking is so powerful it can give you more. Knocking does not only give you a job, it can create a destiny for you. Is someone learning? Knock. To everyone that knocks. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. When you read Amplified, it says, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. It says, knock and keep knocking. And the door will be open unto you. Is someone learning? Knocking talks of obtaining help from men. Listen. As far as the opening of doors are concerned, you will need the ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor. The ministry of mercy and the ministry of favor. There are many doors you will encounter in your life and your destiny that you may not have the key, yet that door needs to be opened. You will have to knock. If I come to your office, for instance, I will have to knock at the door and then you come and open. Is that true? When you open, it is your opening that gives me access. That means I must pray for something to happen to your heart for that door to be opened. The friend here said, I know you are my friend, but I'm sorry. Right now, I'm in bed with my children. My apologies go away. And the man kept. May God put it in the heart of someone this year to rise up and see to it that every closed door is open over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You heard some of the testimonies here. Let me tell you, I have taught you and I will keep teaching you till it enters your spirit that all blessings come from God through man to man. To man. Believe me, man can be used by God to open doors. Doors, very strange doors of opportunity. May that be your testimony. Amen. Are you ready for number three? How do we open closed doors? The third is by supernatural power. The third way doors are open is by the ministry of warfare and power. The supernatural power of God. Because there are doors, especially demonic doors, that will not open except and unless force is engaged. Acts chapter 6 from verse 25. Acts chapter 6 and verse 25. 
Give it to us, please. Acts 6, 25. Acts 16, my apologies, 16, 25. Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang unto God and the prisoners heard them. There were many prisoners in that prison. Some were interested in going out. Others were interested in remaining there. Paul and Silas said, no way, we will not remain here. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake in a prison. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. A key cannot do this one. There are, a key can quietly open the door. But when it is supernatural power, both the door, the foundation of the house must know that it is God coming. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to someone, it is not only keys that will open some doors. The great power of God is about to swing open ancient doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. Means it's finished. Yes, we are changed.